Hello YouTube, I have a little bit of a different kind of video here for you guys. Um, I'm at work, and I've received permission to make videos on these two things right here. Uh, this is a SAN, and this is a Dell server. So, this video is really just to kind of show it off, and talk about its hardware specs, and what it's got in it. This isn't really like a how-to, all it really is is to show off what this thing does, and what it is. So, and to start off, this is a Dell Precision R710 from late 2011, but still very, very powerful, and this is kind of just something that goes to show how, you know, older computer hardware, like server hardware especially, can be very, very powerful, despite the fact that, you know, it's not the latest or greatest. Um, this thing probably cost, I don't even know, five or ten grand, those five years ago, and it's got two Xeon X5650 CPUs running, running at 2.66 gigahertz. Those are both six-core CPUs, hyper-threaded, for a total of 24 logical cores, in this beast. It's got 48 gigs of DDR3, 1333 ECC memory, which is uh, plenty. Oh, well, it's not quite as much as you see in data centers nowadays. You'll see computers with, uh, you know, hundreds of gigabytes of memory, which is absolutely insane. And as for storage, it has a few disks in here. Uh, it takes SAS and SATA, and you've got a couple of 450 gig SAS drives in RAID 1 right down there with ESXi 6.0 loaded on that. That's a hypervisor. Uh, it has a key for Windows Server 2008 under there that I'm not going to show you. Uh, but it's much more efficient to run hypervisors on these machines. Uh, just bare metal hypervisors like ESXi and um, Citrus Xen Server. We've got a couple SATA disks. Their label is 250 gigs. It's actually because I pulled these drive bays out of an older machine that we have. And I put two 2 terabyte SATA disks in there. In RAID 1 as a 2 terabyte VM data store, and then I have a couple blank slots right here. And I also have this SANS Dell PowerVille MD3220i that I'll make a separate video on with 13 disks currently in it, uh, which is used as another VM data store. It's not power on, so it kind of chugs a lot of electricity, and then we're not really using this in a production level environment or anything, but um, basically it's connected over iSCSI via Ethernet to the back of this machine's NICs. And uh, it has about 10 terabytes of iSCSI storage. So as I said, it's got ESXi 6.0. I'm not going to show you any of the uh, details on the homepage here because obviously that'd be a security thing, but that's what it kind of looks like, one of those pages right there. And uh, it has a lot of configurability as a machine, actually, especially with ESXi. It's a really, really great uh, machine to have. So just pulled the cover off and opened it up. Yeah, it's got a lot of really interesting stuff here. Under here, you've got your two CPUs, both of those six-core Xeons, and as you can see, only a third of the memory slots are used. So if we got identical RAM chips to these ones, it would have uh, whatever 96 plus 48 gigs of memory is, you know, 144 gigs of memory, I believe, if I did the math right, which would be absolutely outstanding. And as, as with most servers, it's got a boatload of fans, and you've got your SAS SATA backplane right here that disks actually slide into. Uh, there's the actual top of one of the Seagate disks right there. And what's also interesting is all these riser cards in the back. This is the SAS controller with the onboard NVRAM right there that stores that RAID data plugged into a extended PCI slot of some sort. Then we have a couple PCI Express slots on this riser that have dual NIC gigabit Ethernet cards on that we have four Ethernet cables running out of to that SAN. I have four of them because it's a load balanced and failover to the dual controllers on the SAN so that you know any one of those NICs can go down and you still have connectivity and it's also you know load balanced so that you get more than one gigabit throughput. It's also got four gigabit ports on the back. That's very useful for other connections. And this other riser card's empty right here, but what you can do with these riser cards, you can pull them straight out, and you can get different versions of these. These just have a couple, you know, PCI Express uh, by 8, I guess, slots, but you can get these at PCI Express by 16 slots and actually plug video cards into these. And uh, one of my little projects here was, well, it's kind of like a self-assigned project, was determining what you can do with a video card in a server. And I actually found that if I were to get a riser for here for probably 70 bucks, I could put a pretty beefy video card in there. The only issue was that you might not have power connecting to it, but you could put a video card in it and do pass-through with the most, you know, hypervisors like ESXi and actually dedicate that video card's entire processing power to one of the VMs loaded on it. 
Um, and you'd basically be able to actually plug in another monitor to the back of the video card and actually use the VM directly plugged into the machine or just remote desktop with it and have a pretty powerful, even graphically powerful computer as a VM. But I think that's pretty much all I have to say about it. This is, again, really just kind of like a show-off style of video of, hey, look what, look what I got. But, uh, of course, it's not mine. It's the company's. And um, it's just interesting to see how a five-year-old server like this can be used for so many things. I mean, of course, it chugs power, so you got to be careful. But overall, it's, it's pretty neat. I thought I'd share with all of you.